Today we're going with Sean and Connor. This is kind of Connor's spot, so he'll be leading the way here. But uh, me, Sean, and Connor go fishing quite often. I've been sitting around waiting on you. My bad. Connor's got about 15 fishing poles. I just need the one. You putt with a driver, James? Yep, you I actually do. Oh, I caught a seven pound nine ounce one the other day. You'd be sitting in third place if you run my rankings. Well, you give kid. Connor a mic and you put him out here in his element. Right, he's just one, gonna be a little arrogant. Maybe it was like, maybe a little cooler this morning. And we're biting probably three or four pounds. Of just lily pads, good stuff. Definitely could have been fisherman's error. All right, now hopefully. No, not even close. Did not see a branch behind me and it was over. Ugh, this is not good, man. I got it. But now I gotta feed it back through. We do some crazy stuff sometimes. Just if we feel, if we want. Oh, get on. It's the monster. Oh, he's gonna come off. Get up here. All right, Zepo. About time. It's a little bigger one, huh? Sean slaying him. We gotta pick it up. I know, we gotta, we gotta pick it up. Hold it closer to the camera a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're about to do that. Get, get it up on. That's a big one. Yeah, that was a good fight. Really big one right there. Oh yeah, a little bigger one right there. Hey, uh, two nothing. Sean had some pretty good luck today. Yeah, I started out hot and then got nothing after that. But yeah. two quick ones? I had two very quick ones and then. They weren't really biting today. There we go. We're gonna see how, how good these guys do on camera when uh, talking about their, their mama. Test, test. Do it again. Test, test. There you go, I had it backwards. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. I was hoping that would be awesome. Action. Mom, honestly, I don't think I'd be alive without you. Yeah, I don't know if I want to shout out all the women in my life or just my mama. <laughs> you sound great. All right, and hit it. I love my mom. I love you. Thank you for everything you do for me. I'm so blessed to have you. I love her so much. These guys kill it all the time. I mean, I couldn't ask for more. They make my job easy. Happy Mother's Day. Oh. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Oh, let me redo that one. Let me redo that. One. Hey, mom. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you to all the. Uh, I messed up. Happy Mother's Day, mom. I love you. Do it one more time and slow down and enjoy it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Take two. I'm not good at this. Happy Mother's Day, mom. I love you. A little fast still. Oh, sorry, feel like, man. You know, even though the sun is out, I'm, like, I'm providing like extra light. Even when it's dirty. No. Do it one more time. There's somebody up in the stand. Ah. Boyunk. Roll up. Happy Mother's Day. I just want to say thank you for all that you do for me. I wouldn't be here without you. Sorry. Oh, so close. Hey, thanks for all that you do for us. I uh, love you. Do it one more time. I got you, man. Hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Oh. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> All right, you ready? And hit it. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, I love you. Oh, Wait. <laughs> That's not my at all. Strokes, are you nervous? Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> that made me a little nervous. Oh. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. 
That one was good, I feel like. That one was good. We'll keep that one. Tonight from Swayze Field, Ole Miss is set to host 19th-ranked Texas A&M in game one of the final home Southeastern Conference Series. You know, after looking back at the tape, it's hard to say that James, you know, pitched well, you know, obviously giving up those runs. The biggest issue so far for MacArthur has been location. This A&M team has not missed very many pitches. Really, I think it had more to do with Texas A&M. I think they had a great approach. I, I think they, you know, it was one of those nights where you know, they were going to hit. It was kind of a weird game because I felt like from an offensive standpoint, we were, we were in it the whole time. We, were just, uh, we came up short that one big hit. Cortez chops this one to third. And a double play. That's the third double play that Ole Miss has grounded into tonight. We all know, and we've been in this league, and this is you know week nine in the Southeastern Conference, and we realize that you know you got to be able to put that game away and be ready to play the next day. Uh, you know, as, as disappointing as it is, and as disappointing as I think we played on Friday, uh, I'm really proud of the way the guys you know were able to flush that the next day and, and be able to respond and come back. Uh, when I came on a visit to Ole Miss, I uh, fell in love with the place, loved the coaches, loved the baseball atmosphere, loved the campus, um, loved everything about it, and I uh, you know, wouldn't change that decision if I had to do it over again. I've learned that uh, you know, there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days, and it's just about how you react to those days. and. Um, no matter what happens, you got to get back up and uh, keep moving forward. And uh, that's, that's what I've done in the past four years, and that's what I'll continue to do. And that's really what today is all about. It's the culmination of success in the classroom, in that study hall, on the field, on the track, on the court, on the course, whatever sport you play, we are just so, so proud of you to reach the pinnacle of what higher education is all about, and that's receiving your degree, receiving your diploma, walking across the stage, and being an Ole Miss Rebel for life. What about your proudest, your proudest uh, moment for uh, Toby here? Uh, there are a lot of them. Just playing baseball. That's my first love, is my grandkids in baseball. Kicking dirt. What's that? Kicking dirt. Kicking dirt. <laughs> that's where he, that's how he started. <laughs> looking, looking out at the field and kicking dirt when everything going on. Well, I'm just proud of him in general and all that he's done. And I can remember him starting baseball many, many, many years ago and out in that field. And we're just very, very proud of him and all that he's done. Kicking the dirt. <laughs> nah, just, just uh, you know, all the friends I've made playing baseball. All the. Uh, Friendships, going to school, and everything. Uh, you know, it's been awesome, and uh, it's been an awesome four years. Oh, we got the small. <laughs> Adult small. I right, supposed to sit on your head. Don't wear it like a hat. Like this? I <laughs> like that hat. Let mom move in and take a picture. Look at your mom. This is his home that everybody took him in. The alumni here that, that come and watch all the games and you know everybody adopted him as theirs. I know so many people would come up to us and say, we know about your older son, but Colby's ours. So oh, don't cry. <laughs> so that was a big deal.
got my diploma and uh, pretty pumped about it. What's next? We are uh, we're gonna go play baseball and go win a go win a baseball game. You have the flower. You go give your go to your mom first. Hand her the flower. Kiss her. Shake. Hug your dad, brother, whoever is here. And then at the end, bring you together so we get a picture with both y'all. Then we're done. Got it. I was prepared for it. I guess uh, my whole mindset was not to cry the whole time. Uh, it was emotional. Uh, the last time I ever played at Swayze Field after being here for three years. From my freshman year, seeing all the seniors on their senior day, and you know, it was, it was like in my head, what would my senior day be like? You get all these seniors before you, and you see how much of an impact they made on the program. And the impact they made on the program was so positive that as you come up through your senior year, uh, you expect to make such a big and positive impact on the program as well. Our first senior is number 33, Sean Johnson. Sean has been a part of the program for the last season. This way! Oh! Hey! This way! Congratulations. When I got out there, uh, it was it was really hard not to cry just because I knew my time here was over and and that I was going to miss every, every part of this program, not just the people, but the fans, the experience of playing, it just caught up to me all at once, and uh, it was a heartbreaker. Our next senior is number 25, Colby Bortles. <laughs> According to the baseball team, Bortles has been a team captain for the last two seasons. Congratulations, man, proud, proud of you. Glad I, uh, you know, went through it, and uh, I enjoyed it, and, you know, hugged all my teammates afterwards, and, you know, uh, you know, I did cry. I purposely didn't put on eye black that day, so you know, it wouldn't be that noticeable. But you know, it was a, it was a great experience, and um, you know, I'm happy my family and um, my teammates were there for uh, for me, and you know, it was awesome. You know, so much has been talked about this year about the young team and the number one ranked recruiting class and all the young guys on the field and how uh, we don't have a lot of upperclassmen and how we only have two seniors. But what's not been talked a lot about is the leadership, just the presence that those guys have. And, you know, uh, as I'm walking through the dugout this weekend, it, it's amazing of all the positive energy and the positive comments that have come out of both of those guys, Sean and Colby. Uh, you know, they've made their mark on this program and the fans have seen it. Uh, but you know they certainly have made their their mark you know on this team and in the dugout and in the locker room and they've been great leaders for us. Ryan Rollison gets the ball today. The left-hander, the youngster, having a heck of a freshman campaign. Six and two on the year, 53 innings of work and a 2-1 ERA. Well, Ryan's been so consistent for us since we inserted him in that starting rotation uh, back in week three of Southeastern Conference play. And uh, wasn't quite the start that, you know, especially after Friday night that any of us would, would want where you walk the leadoff guy, you wild pitch him to second base, they move him over, and, uh, you know, of course, their three-hole guy gets him in, and now you find yourself down again. Ground ball, rolled left side. Let's get the run home as Kessinger will glove and throw to first in time for the out just to get Shoemaker. So that leadoff walk comes home for the Aggies, and they lead it one to nothing. So right move or wrong move, you want to shake it off and go after him, then shake it off and go after him. I mean, think along with me. You're too smart. I got a guy that's hitting 360 in a bat, right? And I got a guy that's hitting 260 on that, right? But you got to make some pitches. That's what we're talking about the routine. You got to make some pitches. You got to throw a changeup or a breaking ball or something in the zone in the first inning, right? It all starts because you walk the first guy and then throw a 40-foot ball, right? Not you. It'd be different if you were just the 96 guy that didn't have any command. You have it, and you've pitched like it. Don't wait for the third inning to do it. You know, do it next inning, right? You you got all the pitches and you got it, but I need you now. I don't need you in the third inning when it, it's you know one to zero and all that. I want you to put up a zero now, right? Come on. Yeah, it was a little come to Jesus. Um, you know, it was kind of to wake me up and, you know, you got to be locked in from the first pitch. And he said, you know, going out there and bouncing 40 foot change ups is not you. You know, you're giving them runs out there and we need you today. We need this win and we need you to go deep into the game. And so I, I, I kind of came out there with a chip on my shoulder. You know, I just had the mindset of going right at him and, you know, just thinking I'm the, I'm the best up there and, and going right at him. And, you know, here's my fastball. Let's see if he can hit it. Up to Zobrolo. Excuse me. Roll out. Roll out. Come on, Dad. Come on, Dad. Come on, roll out.
Yeah, boy! boy. I pitch a little bit here. Lefty ready and delivers. Fastball yeah. right down the middle. Boy, roll low. It's a one-two pitch. Strike three. Yes. Big pitch, at it, baby! Ryan's feeling the flow out there as he is just shoving this four-seamer in on right-handers. A TV caught Mike Bianco between innings in, I would say, a stern talk to Ryan Rollison. There was no question. Ryan was listening. Coach P was talking. And Ryan Rollison has come out, I mean, locked in here in the second inning. He listened, huh? Swing and a miss. Struck him out on a pitch upstairs, and he strikes out the side. With three straight strikeouts, Rollison was back on track and dealing. He would give way to the bullpen mid-fourth, but despite them providing quality innings deep into the contest, the Rebs still found themselves down two runs. Bottom of the eighth inning, the Rebels trail the Aggies here in SEC Baseball in Oxford. 4-2 with Fortez about to lead off for the Rebels. 4-5 and 6, Olenek and then Tim Rowe. First pitch, base knocked right field. Kopetsky comes up firing, so a leadoff single. Mike Bianco is going to call a T.O. just to calm his big center fielder down. Got to be ready for the fastball here, right? Yes, but take ball four, but I need you to be on time, right? Because you're going to get a fastball right here. Rip up the gap. Come on. Here's the pitch. Ground ball right side, base hit. Cortez is hit in the bag at second. He's going to try to get to third. Down, 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 down. Here comes the throw. It's offline, and he's on safe the on the hit first slide. And the Rebels have runners at the corners with no out. Some life in this building now, Dave Neal. Mike Bianco told us back in the fifth inning, he said, we just need somebody with a, come up with a big hit. Well, here's an opportunity for Tim Rowe to come up with a big hit. Stepping a throw to first. Olenek was going. The throw to second is in time for the out. And a, oh, he called him safe. Safe! Yeah! Payoff pitch, here it comes. Ground ball toward the shortstop. He backs up, blows, missed it! Go, 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 go! One run scores! Here comes Olenek! He's safe and we're tied at four! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! What a turn of events here, Dave Neal. And you hear some more applause, and that's because they're showing the Ole Miss Rebel softball team at the SEC tournament just one. I think if, if you were in the stadium, you realize how the stadium kind of changed uh, once you guys put the, the, the video of the softball team winning the Southeastern Conference tournament and the crowd kind of erupted at that point and kind of got a little more energy. But as you mentioned, what makes our game so great was you know times that you see during the season, during a game, uh, like Greg Kessinger's at bat. And it's no secret that he struggled offensively this year. Um, they got a guy throwing 95, 96 miles an hour, and he just hangs in there and probably has an eight to 10 pitch at bat and fouls a bunch of pitches off. Fouled away. Keep your nose right on it. And he delivers another fastball, fouled off right there at the plate. Hi, boy. Hadn't any of them hard, DK, but he had put the bat on it. Battling, battling. Yes, he is. Gray's battling here. And he fouls off another one. This is number nine. Pitch number, number nine. nine. On every pitch that I was fouling off, I was thinking to myself, hey, I'm on this guy. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. And it just kept happening. And finally, left one up and over the middle, and I was able to put a good swing on it. Get up! Go, ball! Get up! Get up! I thought I had a chance to get out, and then I saw the guy running. I was like, oh, that ball better keep carrying. Because nighttime at Swayze, it just doesn't go. But I dropped in, and I was fired up. And it is off the base of the wall. Rowe is going to round third. Here he comes. They'll throw to the plate. It's going to be late. He's safe. And Gray Kessinger has his best hit of his young career. You rarely see emotion like that out of out of Greg Kessinger, you know. He's got the big league pedigree in his family and usually plays it pretty smooth, but it was neat to see him at second base giving a bunch of fist pumps and, and the excitement that he had on his face uh, and well-deserved with a huge at bat for us. Woo! Hell yeah! Atta boy! Uh, hey, two outs, no picks. Good secondary lead. With the momentum on their side, the Diamond Rebs would add an insurance run off the bat of Will Golson. 
providing the save opportunity for fiery closer Dallas Wolfel, who puts the bull in bullpen. You know, this is exactly what you think of when you think closer, just a big physical dude who trusts his stuff and can put you away with a swing and miss pitch. It's without a doubt that when Dallas comes in, we're winning the baseball game. The confidence and the mound presence he has is just intimidating. He looks seven foot tall out there as, as far as, you know, how tough he is. He's going to have steam coming off his head and, you know, he's going to throw the ball as hard as he can and, you know, he'll, he'll let you know that uh, he's blowing it past you too. Ole Miss six, Texas A&M four. Runner at first base, one out, one two to Kopetsky. Dallas Wolfo ready. Kicks, fires. Slider struck him out. He was not expecting it. Nailed the inside corner. Got him looking two away. It's a pretty good breaking ball right there. Just painted down and in. And here we go. The matchup we've been alluding to. The best hitter on the Aggies versus this closer for the Rebels. Quite a matchup here with the game on the line. Wolfo. Kicks, fires a pitch. Swing and a miss! He struck him out! And the Rebels come from behind and win a very important game here at home to even the series, a 6-4 final in front of the home folks on graduation Saturday. It's a great dub, man. It's a great dub. A lot of, I mean, that's one of the best college baseball games I think you can watch. So it's a dogfight, and we all competed on both sides. I mean, it's just one of the most fun games I've ever really been a part of. So I mean, it was a blast. We're There's watching fireworks. some fireworks. We just beat AM. Yeah. Softball just beat LSU. It's a great night. Great night to be a rebel. Hey, John, John, stay here. You happy with these young bucks? Put you out on senior night with the dub? Awesome, awesome. Best senior night in Ole Miss history. Always good. Dub. Best seniors in the country. Best seniors in the country. Uh, I got a different view of it. I was in the bullpen the whole time, so it was a cool feeling uh, hearing all the fans out there get rowdy for us. So it was a good win and a uh, great hit by Gray to top it off and not to mention uh, Goldar's little hit up the middle. Great, great game. <laughs> <laughs> Got in his head there. Not able to Dude, do it. Every, is it you that always comes around and gets me? No, that's the first time I've done it. I'm glad I did it. Oh, wait, this is TV. How hey, you feel today? Good. Arm up. Don't get out on the side. Good. Go get him. Hey, do what they haven't done on before you, and that's attack the zone, right? Go right at him. Be aggressive. David Parkinson wasn't the only arm getting warm. The mothers of the Rebel seniors prepared for their moment on the hill. Every ball player wants to make Mama proud. But when the game is played on Mother's Day, it means even more. Okay, let's go, Doctor. Do it up. Here comes Golson. The throw is cut. Runners at the corners, one nothing, Ole Miss. Oh, they've got the runner picked off. And they're going to try to get the run home, and they do. Did the run? Yes, they're going to count the run. Holman does all he can to try to get the tag, but Bortles scores, and Ole Miss puts two on the board. So that'll take us to Hunter Coleman. Boy, right back to Parkinson. High throw. Kessinger, great catch. And they turn the double play. Swing and a miss, 94 miles an hour from David Parkinson. As good as the day began for Parkinson, the top of the third would find him in a tight spot that would only get tighter. 
I, this inning, everything was up, right? Yeah. Even the first hitter, even though he may have hit a strike, you know, you threw a lot of balls above yeah. the waist. And same with, except for the one fastball that shot, shot in on that guy. So you got to get back down in the zone because this guy doesn't swing a lot, you know, but he, it's left on left. Ground ball, you know, we're going to go for a double play. Double play. Back to you, you go there. Yes, if you can't, get third or first, let's get, yes, just sir. get an out. You know, slider first pitch, right? You good with the signs or we yeah, need to mix it up? Good. All right. Hey, listen, this is where we talk about this. Yes, is that back in here right yes, now, right? Lock yes, in. Come on. For me, I kind of changed my mindset a little bit when I have runners on base uh, because I know I'm going to let up hits. I know I'm going to give up a few runs here and there, but my thing is I'm not going to give up multiple runs in an inning. And and for me, that was that was where I really tried to succeed was just making that pitch and really focusing on that pitch during the time and just trying to figure it out. And one of the best hitters in this conference at the plate in the freshman Braden Shoemake. With bases loaded and one out, the top of the third had Parkinson in a surefire pitcher's jam. Got him to swing and miss down in the dirt, and that is not an easy task. Bases full of Aggies. And the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Maybe his best fastball at 94. Parkinson would ace the test, providing six innings of lockdown pitching. But as the game moved into the eighth, the Rebels clung to a narrow two-run lead. It would take only one swing from Captain Tate Blackman to add another. 1-1, swung on, fly ball, left field, that stroke, Kaminsky back in the wall, it is gone! Solo shot, Tate Blackman, that'll extend the lead by a run, a Keith Kessinger add on. Or Tate could just wait one more pitch and swing at it and hit a home run. If the Rebels were to extend their 4-1 to one lead, they were going to need senior Colby Bortles to do it. My previous about a struck out looking um, on a fastball, and I, I was um, really frustrated about it. Then I remember walking out to third base and like, please, like looking up at the scoreboard, I was like, all right, I'm counting, like I'm counting batters until I'm up next and counting stuff, like has, something has to go right. And then, uh, you know, we got to the eighth, got a couple hits, Tate hit the home run, you know, Will got on. I was like, all right, thank you. Oh my goodness, Bortles, deep to left, out of here. Incredible, uh, probably the best moment I've been at here at Ole Miss. I mean, that's a guy that I got a lot of respect for. A uh, great guy, great teammate, great leader, and uh, definitely definitely a great way for him to go out. You just, you just had a feeling that Colby was going to have a big day in some way. Um, you know, he, he's such a good player. Um, rarely has a game where he doesn't do something big like that. And, uh, it's the first mom to be there and see that, his brother, you know, his whole family. And, uh, you know, Colby deserves that. You know, he's given so much to this program, uh, such a great leader for all of us young guys. And um, it's just really a special moment. It couldn't be happier for him. Here we go, two five. Okay! Okay! I think what makes our game so great, you know, there's moments, you know, that that uh, you can capture, you know, the true emotion of what's going on. But that that was a special moment, certainly uh, for for him. But I think, you know, one of the special moments of my coaching career. And if you watch him run around the bases, he's kind of looking around, and it looks like he's just soaking it in. And uh, man, I was smiling from ear to ear the whole time he was running around the bases, and I just couldn't be prouder for anybody that the the work and the effort and the great teammate that he is uh, couldn't happen to a better guy. And I got goosebumps. One for mom on Mother's Day in your final game here in front of the home folks for the senior who graduated, oh, that, bringing man. tears to mama. You know, my mom was sitting with his mom during the game, and she said she started crying after he hit the home run. And it's just such a special moment for a guy that's given four years to this program and everything he's got and built his way up to being the player that he is now and being able to finish his career like that is just something special. Feeling. It's a good feeling, good feeling. Uh, you know, it could be the last game I'll play here, and uh, on Mother's Day is uh, special. And, uh, you know, super proud of the way we played and uh, everything. So I'm still uh, taking it all in right now, and, uh, you know, it's, 
It was special. Chuck made me cry. It was special. And, uh, you know, we, we got it done and super proud to, uh, you know, hit that home run for my mom and, uh, you know, everything. <laughs> but I'll never get it back. <laughs> okay, you ready? Testing one, two, three. Can you hear us? All right, he's good. Hey, let's do something incredible right now. Wow. We gotta do something way cooler than Ryan's. Like, oh, here's my Instagram thing. I just want followers. Right. <laughs> That's not his best! But it might be. I don't know. Oh! Oh, good oh that's a good tweet. That's a good tweet. What if dogs actually like, Think about absolutely them. hate us? Oh, 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 oh,